Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video is nothing but tech, so it's just a tech video today. Um, this video involves my 408 cubic inch small block Ford dyno mule, and particularly what's shown in this video will be testing three different manifolds and a bonus thing that was also tested. If you're unfamiliar with this thing at all, here's what the rundown of it is. It's a 408 cubic inch small block Ford. It's a Windsor, and the short block actually came from a viewer named Bill Brennick. He donated the short block, said just test or whatever else. So the short block specs go like this. It's a stock block, two bolt main. I'm fairly certain he used a main girdle and studs. Eagle Forge crank, Eagle Forge rods, DSS Forge pistons, but they're a dish. They're a negative 18 cc dish. So with the heads that are on here, it's a 10 and a half to one compression ratio. By the way, I'm sorry about the sound. The wind's really moving the garage door. It has a solid roller camshaft in this configuration that came from Daniel Powell, and it's a 254, 267 duration at 50 thousandths. So 254 intake, 267 on exhaust, 658 lift on intake, 653 on exhaust on a 108 lobe separation. That's how it is. That's pretty much the rundown. And the intakes that are tested with this is a JEG single plane manifold, a Elderbrock, Super Victor that was also sent in from a viewer. And this one has some mild port work, which I'll show you. And then also YN Stealth dual plane that was also sent in by a viewer. Those three got tested. And I'm gonna show you the dyno results, the graphs, so you can see the comparisons and we'll get to go through all that stuff. Now, before I get into this, on Thursday, what I'm gonna do is a live chat, probably 7.30 Central Standard Time in America. I'm gonna do a live chat. So if you tune in for that, and you could, if there's questions you want to ask about this particular engine, um, you can ask me that during that time. And I'll be happy to answer as much as I can. I think I'll go for about maybe an hour. You don't have to ask exactly about that. You can ask about anything related to any of this. And I'll do my best to answer or anything in general. So that will be on Thursday at 730 Central Standard Time. So also... If you're having a hard time seeing these dyno charts and graphs because you're maybe watching on your th phone and you're just looking at that little thumbnail because you don't want to watch an ad, I'm going to try to say the numbers out loud so hopefully you can hear them. But if you really would like to see the results in the, the description for this video, I'm going to put a link so you can buy all the results and then you can get them in your phone and they can just blow them up and you can look at them however you want. So it makes it much easier. But I'm going to try to say all the stuff out loud so you can hear it regardless. Anyway, uh, let me start off by showing you the intakes and then we'll get to the dyno results. I forgot to mention the heads that are on this thing. They're a, uh, they're a Chinese imitation of an AFR 205 head. I sell them, I've got one pair in stock. I did a valve job and redid the valve job and then blended the chambers in that. And they flow 318. I'm going to put up a picture here in just a second before I show the dyno results of the heads and the flow numbers so you can see that. But they flow really, really well. And I do sell those heads. And yes, I'm in, I do sell heads, obviously. But that head is available for sale, so it's not that uh, uncommon. Promax sells the identical head, except for it's got 11 30 seconds fouls, which I also sell that one. Now to the intakes. This is the first one that was used. This one I came from Bill Brennick. He just happened to have this here. So he had the short block and he had this intake to test. This is the JEGS single plane. This is its basic design. As you can tell, there's no port work done whatsoever. Someone said that this is a Hurricane. I don't know. I haven't seen a Hurricane Ford intake, so I can't really tell you for sure. It looks a lot like a Victor Jr., but I don't have a... I have a Victor Jr. here, but it's for an 8.2 deck. So it might look different than the 351 Windsor version. But I really can't say on that. But... The port match, as you can kind of tell, this gives you, if the camera captures it right, you could see it's way off as far as that goes. I mean, you can look, that's the intake port, essentially. So there's very little above it, by the way. Um, it's not lined up perfectly. So that's how it was ran. Now, the second intake that was used was this one. This came from a, a, a viewer named Herb. And I'm doing a set of heads for him right now. But he had sent this as, as an Elderbrock. It's a Super Victor. Now, he did some port work, so I'm going to kind of show you. And this isn't what I would do. So, and I'm not knocking him in anything. So, this might be something that more of you might do. But you can tell he 60 gridded everything. He kind of smoothed things up, it looks like. I don't know that he removed a whole lot of material. Maybe some from this side, but not as much as I do when I'm porting. But it's not bad for any switch of the imagination. 
but because he did port work, the port matches a lot better. As you can tell, there's very little carbon tracing that you can see a little bit on that. See that little bitty there? But for the most part, it's pretty close, okay? So much closer than this Jegsman is. And the third one is a YN dual plane stealth. And I'm just gonna show a generic picture from Jegs or Summit, probably from Summit, just so you can see what this manifold is. But those are the three that gets tested. So let me show you the picture of the, uh, the dual plane and then I'll show you the head stuff and then we'll do some dyno results. Here's the YN stealth dual plane. It looks like your average dual plane manifold. It's not an air gap design and it also does not have a cut down divider. So it's pretty generic as far as they go. And I, it's actually tilted carb flange too. So it's, I think it's made more to fit underneath the hood. And you could see when I show you a picture with the, the dominator on it, you could see that the carbs definitely slanted more downward. So again, probably lower height for hood clearance. Here are the heads again. So you could see what they look like, the chambers. Uh, nothing too fancy going on there. They did have a 60cc chamber when it was done, which yielded a 10 and a half to one compression ratio with those dish pistons. And here's the flow numbers that go along with it. So again, not bad, uh, just not wow. Here are the dyno results. So the first intake tested was that JEG single plane. It yielded 579 horsepower and it did it at 6,600 RPM. Its torque came in at 517 foot-pounds of torque and it did it at 5,200 RPM. So not bad as a starting point. The next one that got switched was the Super Victor that's ported. That one yielded 595 horsepower and it did it at 6,900 RPM. So it raised peak horsepower RPM, 300 RPM up higher. Um, peak torque came in at 516 and did at 5400 RPM. That's one foot pound down from the JEGS, but they might as well call it a wash. And it did it at 5400 RPM. So it raised peak torque 200 RPM. But here's where the surprise comes in. When we put the YN Stealth on, it made peak horsepower of 539 horsepower, and it did it at 6,500 RPM. That, my friends, is a ginormous loss. And if you're like, well, it makes more torque because it's a dual plane, because you know that's what you hear on the internet, dual planes make more torque. Nope. Peak torque came in at 494 foot-pounds of torque at 5,100 RPM. Wait till I show you the overlay and you'll see how bad that intake truly is. But those are the raw numbers. Now let me show you the overlays. This is where things get really interesting. This is the overlay comparison. We have a red line being the YN Stealth dual plane, the black line being the JEG single plane, and the blue line being the ported Super Victor. Typically what happens is the dual planes, like the internet claims, is typically better in the lower RPMs. And in my experience, usually they're much better to about 5,200 RPM, at least from the small block Chevy, the LS, and the big block Chevy, up to about 5,200 RPM, they're the same. It's where they're the same. And from 5,200 on, usually the single plane is better. This is not the normal thing. If you look, the JEGS single plane is matching it in the lower RPMs. It, it just isn't, the dual plane just isn't as good. The outlier is that Super Victor. Look how bad it is at the lower RPMs as far as torque goes. But then it also does something weird, which we'll talk about in just a minute. But if you're strictly comparing single plane to a dual plane and you have the JEGS versus the YN, the JEGS beats it even in the low torque. Now, granted, I'm not pulling down the lower RPMs, but I'd be willing to bet I'd have to go down to 3,800 RPM before it actually beat the single plane in torque production. This manifold, this YN Stealth, just really isn't as designed for this engine. It just is not what it's for. But that JEGS is pretty good. The interesting part, when we come and look at the Super Victor. There's this weird spot in the graph right here where the Super Victor at the beginning of the pool is just, it's way down on torque. What you would expect to see a difference between a single plane and a dual plane. And then it hits a point and it just ramps northwards. And you can see it on the graph clear as day. I've got an arrow pointing to it. It's just making a hard move. That's a bit unusual. Typically we see flashes up, but that's probably the biggest flash up I have seen. What it's kind of telling you, and this is probably more indication with the Windsor stuff, 
the runners always have a, a length where they're very well tuned, and there's always a length where they're not at all tuned for that RPM. It looks like with the Super Victor, it's horrible at that RPM, the lower one, and then they're getting better in tune and it really hits at that RPM. They start coming in much better. Now, with the Ford, however, you still have the two short ones and the two longer outside runners, but together that match or whatever this one in particular is, it definitely likes that RPM to come on strong. So that's a little unusual. Here is your bonus test. And I know this looks ridiculous, and I'm going to explain why I did it. So to back up, on all the manifolds that were ran, they had a spacer. On the single-plane manifolds, I used an AFR. It's, it's actually really, really cheap when you think about it. I think it's like $45. It's an AFR four-hole tapered spacer. In dyno testing and the small block Chevy and others, it's been really, really good. Better than most. That cost $200. So bang for the buck, great spacer. That was used on the single plane. On the dual plane, a one-inch open spacer. I have tried that AFR one on the dual planes, and they, they never work well. The one-inch open always seems to be better, and that's what was ran. So all of them ran was spacer. But when you look at this, you're like, that's dumb. And I would agree, because I thought that way for years until I tested it a few years ago. What this spacer combination is, this is a HVH 4500 to a 4150 adapter. Now, unfortunately, this is the newer style. The older style is what I had been using before, but you can't get them anymore, and I've been trying to get another one. I'm using a 1050 Dominator up top. When I was doing the 4150 carburetor, by the way, it's a 1,000 CFM Damon carburetor that I've been using for all this stuff. So flow-wise, they're relatively close. Um, but and I, again, I know it looks stupid. When I did this on the small block Chevy, this combination, and the reason why I even tested it is because I thought, I want to prove people how stupid this is. And I got proved wrong. In the small block Chevy, this combination, dual plane, the adapter, and the dominator, it was worth 20 foot-pounds of torque. I, of course, thought it was a fluke. We did it on the big block Chevy, the 496 with the trick flow heads. It also worked. When I tried it on the LS, it was a wash. It didn't make anything of a difference. So out of curiosity, the LS is very similar to the way the Fords are. I wanted to try again, and so I did. So before with the 4150, it made 539 horsepower. With this adapter, it made 537. Torque production went from 494 to 497. And when you look at that way, you're like, it's not much of a dif dif difference. It really looks like a wash until you look at this overlay. The peaks may look the same, but look how much the dominator added in the middle. That d dominator spacer did the same thing on the small block Chevy and the big block Chevy. It just made more. It's, it's a pretty nice gain there as far as torque production. Peak horsepower doesn't look like that much, but it definitely helps in the middle. I know it looks weird, and that's why I test it, just to see. So interesting, and to say the least. Well, that's going to wrap up the video. And honestly, I'm out of stuff to test on the small block Ford. I don't have any other stuff to test with. I don't have any other manifolds and stuff. So if there's things you want, really would like to see tested, and truthfully, I would wish this small block Ford to be just like the small block Chevy. I think I tested 26 manifolds on that small block Chevy. I would love to do something similar to that on the Ford. Just because I think there's a lot out there, we could probably see what's going on. But you like, hey, I've got this weird manifold or I got this trick flow manifold or whatever. If, if you send them in, I'll test them and I'll try to get them back to you as quick as possible. I'm not going to test, just schedule a dynos test and do one manifold though. I usually do a bunch. So if I get enough in, we'll do it. But currently I'm out of stuff, ideas to test on that small block Ford. So thanks for all that. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. Don't forget, I'm going to do a live feed, so if you want to ask additional questions about this, it'll be on Thursday at 7.30 Central Standard Time. Also, if you couldn't see this stuff or you couldn't hear me, um, again, in the description for this video, there's a link for you to purchase all the dyno sheets and everything that you've seen in this video and in the other ones. So there you go. That's about it. It is fun to do. I do like the Ford, um, like all engines, really. But you guys... Uh, remember, I do not port cast iron heads. I'm no Superman. I did raise Superboy. You guys take care.